Hello, this is Dirk. I'm doing a little tutorial on the 470. I've set a course uh, that's called YouTube, and we will see how much traffic it attracts. But what I want to do is give you a little insight on how um, I sail the 470. It's a really fun boat, but it also is very complicated and frustrating. You will all know that probably already. Uh, and let's see, so adjustments, the way I set it, first of all, weight is probably one of the most key ingredients in your boat speed. You want to push all your crew forward. Uh, I mostly use crew forward upwind and downwind. Um, from what I understand, the best setting and what I use is a loose fang, loose fang, and I use a loose outhaul. Some people I've talked to use 75% uh, on the outhaul. Uh, that's a choice you have to make. Watch your VMG. You have to choose your course to wind based on your VMG speed. <clears throat> if you're not using a VMG, you need to start using one. VMG is velocity made good. What it does is it takes your course to wind and your boat speed and calculates a ratio that shows your speed directly upwind or directly to the mark. So the BMG is probably the most important indicator for you to watch. As I'm sailing upwind, I am watching the flatness of my boat, I am adjusting my sails to keep my boat flat, and I am watching my VMG to decide which course to sail. So I will experiment with these factors, the boat flatness, the mainsail trim, and my course to win, and watch my VMG to find the best numbers I can get. My time spent to win is mostly watching the VMG. I have one eye on the boat in, in the viewfinder, but my other eye is always on the VMG, and that's the most important indicator to keep your eyes on. I um, also, if you notice, I do a little bit of an oscillation with the swell. When a swell comes to you, you want to turn slightly up using your momentum to get you up the face. And then you basically gulp up those swells by turning then downwind to use gravity to help you gyrate more speed, also a lower point of, point of sail. So make sure that you give that a try. It's not something that comes easily and different, ex different experiments will help you try and get the best uh, oscillation with your, your helm to try and get your speed moving. Um, also, as we approach this mark coming up, you want to be ready on your spinnaker. You want to make sure that you uh, have it adjusted the way you want, automatic or manual. But one thing that I do, and I think is very important, is I open my spinnaker while I'm still on my upwind course. In other words, as I approach the mark, just as the mark is to beam, I will open my spinnaker at that time and then allow the spinnaker to help me turn downwind. The main reason for this is that it helps stabilize the boat. A lot of times when you turn downwind, there is a centrifugal force on your mast and your rigging and your crew changes, uh, uh, moves around for you to adjust, and this causes an instability in the boat. So open your spinnakers early, not too early so you're gonna hit the mark, but early enough that your boat stays stable on that turn downwind. As we head downwind, you're gonna find that there's a lot of problems that most of us have experienced with this oscillation that happens. You have a lot of weight on the mast, and you have a round bottom on the boat, and this causes this 470 and the 420 to uh, actually even the laser to oscillate downwind a lot. The way I deal with it is that I steer underneath the mast. So if I have an oscillation where the mast is, is heading le to leeward, then I will steer the helm to leeward and put the bottom of the mast underneath the top of the mast. This, if you get used to this, you can anticipate this oscillation and get it under control before you end up swimming like all of us have done. The oscillation will get larger and larger and then next thing you know you're upside down. Another factor that I use a lot on my uh, broad reaches like we are here and my beam reaches 
is the control of my center board. What you try and get going is a little bit of a sideways crab in the boat. This allows you to have more sail exposed to the wind and still not lose your ground as far as your downwind VMG. So you use your VMG to wa and watch it closely as you uh, lift your centerboard a little bit. Turn your boats a little bit more upwind than you would normally want to sail on this course and watch your VMG. You have to make a compromise between your course that you need to make to the mark and the amount of VMG speed. I want to take a brief intermission here uh, from the tutorial and tell you about giving us a like if you could to help encourage our ratings and help others to be able to see it. Also if you want to subscribe to our Sail Simulator channel you can subscribe in the link above. We are also starting a all-language blog where it has a built-in translator. It is at this address where you can become part of our sales simulator virtual community and start to share your opinions, your ideals, and your ideas about sales simulator. Hope to see you all there. This is a short upwind. Um, it can become a factor if you get too close to that little rock over there, but it's not really that close that you have to worry about it. It's actually better to tack early and on this particular course and um, get to this little upwind leg uh, from the starboard side. You will have right away, if the more boats you have running this course together, the more you are going to want to get to that starboard leg before everybody else because port boats like I'm coming in right now on port is not a good deal when you have a lot of boats. It's going to make a lot of confusion and frustration right there. Again, pop the spinnaker. Here it goes, hopefully. Should be right in this little, there it goes. Help me turn downwind. And this particular leg, depending on how many boats are around me, I'm going to take a much deeper downwind. It's going to be much more almost direct downwind, just a little bit off my broad reach on this starboard tack. And then I'm going to jive here, head back to the mark. It's just a short little leg. But watch your VMG. Make sure that you, uh, you keep the boat stable and get prepared for this kind of more of a beam reach that's going to take us to the final upwind to the finish line. We're going to see some heavy duty effects from the heavy from the wind as we round this mark. Uh, we have centrifugal force, we have um, a lot of wind pressure on those sails and you can see it's very hard to keep that boat down. One of the greatest factors you can use here on this because there's so much pressure on this main is to bring your centerboard up. Bring it up a little bit, not too much, it'll make it too slippery and you'll just slide out like if you were on, on ice need a little bit of board and, and what I do is as I get on this course, uh, this point of sail, I will have my control on that center board and I will continue to bring it up and then slightly down as I see how slippery the bottom feels to me. Again, we got to be ready on this rounding to get our spinnaker down at the right moment and time this rounding so that uh, we have the least amount of disruption to the boat as we turn up wind. Again, it's a main sheet control. It's releasing the spinnaker and bringing it down and then sheeting the main at the right time so that you make a smooth go of it. See how loose my main sail is right here? Get that turn up wind, make sure my crew is hiking and then start to pull it in. That helps keep your momentum going too. You do not want to waste too much of your energy by turning too quickly and you don't want to lose too much ground by turning too slowly. So the timing of rounding these marks can be a really important factor in how well you do in a race. Well, that's pretty much it. Where There's going to be one tack back to the finish line. It's really important, if you will notice, to try and get to the windward or the, the starboard side of this finish line if you can. You will lose a lot of ground if you go to the, to the, uh, to the port side of the finish line. So I usually try and run out this uh, that port tack as far as I can so that I barely make the starboard side of the, of the, of the course. It's, um, it's not easy to judge, but watch that little green dot on your compass. That helps you with a lot of these decisions. Although 
on the finish line, you will see that the dot is uh, the center of the finish line. Good wins. Take care.